All right. Without further ado, a man who needs no introduction. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing? Come on, DEFCON. Hey, my name is Guillermo. I'm 22. It's my first time in DEFCON, first time speaking to so many people. So I think the Irish are going to be good for this. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about Wi Fi hacking. So, yeah. So I have a bachelor's degree in the University of Chile. I'm Chilean, by the way. Uh, I'm one year until I get my majors. So uh, this, uh, I'll talk about uh, a little bit about, about me. So I'm, I'm into uh, scrappers or crawler, crawlers. I don't know if you guys know them. Yep. So I really like uh, automation about things like things you shouldn't do manually, you should tell the PC or, or the machine to do it uh, one, again and again. So uh, I helped create the genealogy uh, tree for Chile, Chile, the biggest genealogy tree in Chile. Um, I did an HTR, it's handwritten text recognition uh, research in Guatemala last year. So I'm into AI as well, as most of you guys are. And I went to DEF CON China on June, this last DEF CON on China, the first one. Uh, we did a workshop uh, in my second internship. I did uh, Wi-Fi hacking. So that's what we presented for DEF CON China. And this is going to be the same uh, workshop, just the, the talk. So if, um, I don't know if you guys saw that the slides are going to be in that, in that link. The slides are really similar to the workshop ones. So if you want to take a look, there's going to be uh, on the second link over there, there's going to be some code for everything uh, we're going to talk about. Yep. You got your pictures? All right. So Wi-Fi. Who knows here Wi-Fi? Everybody knows Wi-Fi, right? So what is it? What is Wi-Fi? Uh, Wi-Fi is a radio frequency. What does it do, though? So the idea of Wi-Fi is communicating. You have um, an ISP that connects to the World Wide Web, and uh, you have a router that gives you the communication between the, the web and your uh, machines or cell phones. So I'm going to talk about a little brief history uh, of Wi-Fi. So on 97, the IEEE pro LAN, LAN protocol, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the IEEE um, LAN protocols were defined. And at first, they only supported two mega, megabytes links. So that wasn't good enough for Wi-Fi. That was uh, 802.11a. Uh, and then once in year 99, 802.11b uh, came around, and it was like 10, 15, 20 megabytes uh, per link. So that was good for Wi-Fi. So that's when, uh, that's when web came in, in 99. Uh, two years later, web got exploited. So web, so bad. Uh, in 2003, w WPA came across. And 2006, WPS, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit w about WPS. On um, 2011, we got WPS uh, vulnerable. So uh, does anybody here know WPS? Yep. Yep. Hey, there you go. Um, 2017, we got WPA2 uh, cracked. And 2018, we got WP WPA3. And... Uh, one year later, it's got already five vulnerabilities, so it's not going to be implemented, I think. Yep, thanks for nothing. <laughs> so what are, gonna, what are the attacks I'm going to talk to you about today? Uh, we're going to attack WPS, we're going to attack web, and WPA, WPA2. We're going to talk about uh, men in the middle. How can we do that, and how effective is it? Uh, Denial of service, just one slide. And uh, DNS hi hijacking. So WPS, well, what is it, first of all? Uh, WPS was implemented for the non-geeky people 
to connect to the Wi-Fi really easy and quick. And yeah, it has a single uh, hard-coded uh, value. So only one value doesn't change unless you change it manually. On 2011, it was cracked, brute force attack. So you can uh, spoof all the traffic by uh, on, w on WPS. So WPS has eight numbers, and those eight numbers give you 10 to the eighth combinations. So that's a really big key space for, I mean, you, you, you look at that number, you say, wow, how can, how can you, how can WPS be vulnerable? But the last digit is a checksum, so that's one less, 10 to the seventh. And you get four, the first, first four digits are gonna do a checksum, and then the next three digits are gonna do a different checksum. So you actually get uh, 10 to the fourth plus 10 to the three, you only get a, a key space of 11,000. So from that millionaire key space, you only get 10,000. So that's why it's vulnerable. So I'm gonna go over the commands really quickly. First, you're gonna want to put your, moni uh, your uh, monitor mode, um, uh, what's it called, a Wi-Fi antenna or somebody? <laughs> the alpha, nobody? What's it called? What's the term for um, your antenna? What's that? No, 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 just uh, the device, how, how do you call it? Adapter, yeah, that, that was, I was looking for that. So um, you put your adapter in monitor mode, and you can use the, the wash uh, command to, to look at all the, the WPS around you. And uh, so you're gonna brute force it with Reaver. That's how I did it, that's how I'm gonna show you today. So that simple command is gonna um, brute force attack it, you don't have to do anything at all, you just Reaver it and uh, it's gonna crack. And uh, fourth command, you can uh, authenticate to the Wi-Fi using the pin. So, so I'm gonna show you, I know you can't see that well, but okay, so first you put your monitor mode uh, interface, then what you'll do is uh, check its monitor mode, then you use wash to check uh, all the WPS around you, you're gonna see uh, all of them showing up. So you're gonna pick your target and we're gonna attack it. Yeah, we chose a WPS. We get the MAC address and the, the interface and we re start reaving it. I don't know if that's a thing, start reaving. You re it. So what you can see right there is uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna start using pins, uh, like random pins and it's gonna try to authenticate. I can't, sorry. <laughs> I tried. So you can see, you can see right there, it's like M1, M2, M3, M4. So it's gonna go through a process, like it's gonna try pin uh, 11111, and it's gonna go through the uh, packages, and it's, go, it's gonna be like, ah, oh, this is not the pin. Okay, next pin. And Reaver is gonna go brute force attack with the 11,000 uh, key space combinations. So, so yeah, that's WPS, uh, really easy to crack. Uh, first, if you're tr trying to uh, hack Wi-Fi, that's the first thing you're gonna have uh, to try. Like, you see WPS, okay, let's attack it. Oh. So, WPS has uh, three versions, uh, zero, no version, one and two. Uh, version. I only, I, I was only successful with uh, version zero, uh, with the no version. Why? Because the routers uh, were so old, they didn't have, <clears throat> they didn't lock after trying a, a lot of pins. So you can uh, uh, attack it and it won't lock. Uh, versions one and two, they have, uh, after uh, several failed attempts, they'll get locked. So the solution there is gonna be either the uh, owner of the router has to reset it and I'm sorry. And it's not gonna be that fast because if you're gonna start attacking, I don't know, 10 pins, he's gonna uh, restart the router and 10 pins, you're never gonna get the 11,000, you know? So that's a slow uh, solution. So there's the Pixie Dust script 
I wasn't successfully uh, I wasn't successful running it, but I've read a lot about people being successful running the, that pixie dust. So the way to uh, solve the locks is uh, using pixie dust. <clears throat> yeah, so you have to be really close to the AP, to the access point to crack uh, WPS. If you're too far away, you just won't get it. And there's a list of 175 devices uh, that are, are vulnerable by WPS. So if you got the link from the presentation, you can access that link. <clears throat> so now that we got WPS uh, out of the way, we're going to start talking about encryption methods. And uh, so I have a question for you guys. Why do we need encryption? Like, all right, so the first reason is that when you send data over the internet, you have no power over the data. So once you send it, anybody can take that packet, anybody can do anything with that data. So uh, as, as users, we do, we do not want to uh, have our data out in the wild. So uh, encryption methods. Uh, first, uh, in 99, it was web, and then in WPA, WPA2, and WPA3. So we're going to talk about uh, all of them four. Um, maybe not a lot about WPA3. So WEP, -E -E web. Has anybody used web here? Yep. How, since how long? Uh, yeah, a well, while back. So you're not going to be uh, using WEP if you are here in DEF CON, you know? But you can still uh, check, you can still uh, find WEP uh, in the wild. So if, I don't know why people are not uh, up to date, but they should really stop using uh, WEP. So WEP has a 64 and 128-bit uh, key sizes. Uh, it uses uh, Stream Cipher RC4 for uh, ciphering which is actually a pretty good method, uh, cipher method, but the vulnerabilities is not going to be uh, the ciphering. Uh, the key is a static and is entered manually, so if you're using web, you're going to have to type in or randomly generate the, the key, and it's going to stay the same uh, all around. So in 2001, it was compromised, and it is very easy to crack. Uh, to crack it, you're going to have to uh, have some traffic through the network, and I'm going to explain to you why. Yeah. So why is web vulnerable? So uh, the packets are encrypted uh, by uh, the pre-shared key. So when you uh, enter the, pas the password of the web, uh, that key is going to be used all throughout the, the packets. So every packet I send uh, to, to the internet is going to be encrypted by the same key. So so if you intercept, uh, let's say, 10,000 packets, you're going to uh, be able to decipher the password. Just uh, mathematicians are so cool to, to do this. I, I don't know how does, how does it work behind the scenes, but if it works, don't break it. So the vulnerable thing here is that IVs are going to be repeated. The IVs is an initialization vector. Once you send the packet, uh, the encryption takes an IV, and since IVs are not infinite, we are going to have uh, like an overflow, and you're going to have repeated IVs. So with 24 bits, you're going to have uh, that 16 million uh, amount of IVs. So once you start sending data through the, the network, um, once you reach over the 16 million 7,000, 700,000, uh, it's going to go back to one, and it's going to reutilize the same IV it used for a packet I sent a while ago. So I can compare both uh, IVs, and mathematicians are cool, so it works. You can uh, run all of the IVs in about five hours. If you're uh, patient, uh, you can get a web cracked in five hours. Usually it's not that long. It usually takes about half an hour. And some commands. So once again, you're going to put uh, your interface in monitor mode. Then you're going to look for the target with air, air dump. Uh, all of you guys know the tools I'm using, right? Like you've been to the to the village. Uh, after you uh, search for your target, we are gonna start doing uh, specific um, 
scan on that same target using the BSS ID, like the MAC address, and the channel it's on that AP. And in another terminal, we're going to start uh, de authenticating him. Why? Why do we need to de authenticate the, the user or the clients? Because when the client uh, connects to the network, it's going to ask, it's going to go through the IVs and it's going, going to send packets to the, net, the network. And it's going to be like, hey, I'm the one, I'm the user for this AP. And IB is generated. And then you get the, the since you are looking for the number three uh, step, the air dump, you're going to start getting all those packets. So it's very important for you to start to uh, keep <coughs> to keep those packets saved somewhere. So then you can crack it with air crack. Usually, if you have about 10,000 packets, which is uh, maybe 10 minutes of uh, listening into the Wi-Fi, uh, you can crack it. So um, first, we're going to put our interface in. Ah, OK, skip that step. So I went directly to the AP I wanted to crack. Uh, right now, we are, uh, we are watching for the AP. We can see we have a client connected uh, back there. It's a station. So if I know, I know you can't you can't see that well, but here in the data column, I can't see either. I can't see either. In the data in the data column, you're going to start generating packets, and those are the important packets. So once you get a, a lot of packets, you're going to start cracking it. You can see that this station right here is generating a lot of packets because it's uh, maybe downloading something from from the web or um, streaming, I don't know. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't. Mm. <laughs> I can't go forward, but uh, I, I I wanted you guys to see uh, how it got the password like after you uh, air crack it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna uh, stay here for a minute, okay? <laughs> so there you can see I got a lot of packets in the data column. So when I decide to uh, say uh, it's enough packets, I'll air crack it. I'll just go ahead and do it. Uh, you can start running on a second terminal, the air crack command. And it's going to go, so the first air crack is going to ask for 5,000 uh, IVs. If it doesn't get it, it's going to wait until you get 10,000. So you can have this in a parallel uh, terminal, having the air crack command. And it's, when it detects it's 5,000, it's going to go air crack it. And when it's 10,000, it's going to try again. So there you, you just saw uh, it was really, really, really fast. Like I ran the command and it just instantly cracked it. Cracked it. I, I think I, have, I had about 20,000 packets in my uh, cap files. So that's a pretty good number. About 10,000 is a pr uh, good number for start cracking it. So web. What's the conclusion about web? Do not use web. It's really easy to crack. Uh, the encryption, encryption um, um, so all your traffic is going to be uh, unencrypted if you get the password, you know. So we're going to go into WPA. WPA has uh, two types of uh, ciphering. It's got TKIP and PSK, also known as AES. It's got 128 and 256-bit uh, key phrases. And uh, the difference between TKIP, it's going to go uh, packet to packet doing a, uh, it's going to create dy dynamically, uh, what's it called? Uh, it's a pre-shared key, it's a PS PSK. It's going to create it dynamically for every packet you're going to encrypt. And AES, A A -E -S, it's a stronger uh, ciphering method. Uh, if you want to crack AES, it's going to take you millions of years, so it's really strong ciphering method. And it was adopted by the US government in about uh, 2006. 
So WPA and WPA2 are really similar between each other. The only thing that changes is that uh, the only thing that changes is that it's going to always use AES. It's not going to uh, let it use the TKIP. So the problem with WPA is that the TKIP is really similar to the RC4 uh, stream ciphering so that we saw in web. And that is not going to be good since web is cracked. So WPA TKIP is going to be really similar to web. So it's as vulnerable as, it's as, vulnerable as web. Um, so AES is the best uh, ciphering method. It's the most uh, safe. And well, how, how can you create the PSK, the pre-shared key? Is that you take a uh, passphrase and it's going to go through uh, a function. I don't remember the name of the function. The function is called a uh, password based key derivation function, which uh, it does, it uh, create, creates a value for, or it, it creates a key. Yeah, that's, that's what it does, the, that function. So once you get uh, the passphrase through that function, you are going to get the PSK. Once you get the PSK, you're going to generate the PMK, which is going to be the, um, I can't remember the, what's it stand for? Um, uh, I can't remember the PMK. Uh, pair, pairwise master key, there it is. So once you get the pairwise master key, you're going to combine it with uh, a value, actually two values, the uh, MAC address of the AP and the, another, the MAC address of the client. So you're going you're gonna to combine the, the pre-shared uh, pre key, uh, the pairwise master key, with all these four values, and you're going to get uh, the master key. Okay, that looks very bad. But, okay, so you can see how the, it's gonna, uh, the client and the router is gonna be communicating. Uh, first, the router is gonna send uh, an anons, which is the first value of, um, it's gonna be the first value that the client is gonna use to create the, P, uh, the PMK. So once the, the AP sends that, the client is going to send back the PMK. Once the, it's sent, the router is going to say, oh, okay, so you are, you're okay until this point, and it's going to send back another packet. Um, yeah, so you can see it's a four-way handshake. Does everybody know what the four-way handshake is, right? Yep. We're going to go over a little bit. So what's uh, the vulnerabilities here uh, in WPA? The thing is that, okay, so the pairwise master key is composed of uh, four uh, different sections. And the algorithm is only, only checks the key say, key CK, KCK, KCK, part of the, of the PTK. Why, why it does that? Because uh, the chances of getting a key CK uh, correct is uh, the probability of getting a correct key CK with uh, PTK correct is nearly zero. It's uh, one over three to the 10 to the 38. Yeah, it's zero. No. So the algorithm is go only going to check the key CK uh, part. So why do, why do we need to know that? So the way to crack it is uh, analyzing the four-way handshake. Once you understand the four-way handshake, you, uh, ha you know what to look for. So in the uh, first step, uh, I, I already explained this, so I'm going to go fast. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so finally, in the fourth step of the four win handshake, the AP is going to tell the client, hey, uh, your numbers match, my numbers match, uh, you're a good uh, host, come inside my network. So for a little bit of commands, first you're going to put your uh, monitor mode interface, uh, as always. You're going to look for the target with air dump and uh, specify the target with, with, with air dump and specifying the channel and the BSS ID. 
In another terminal, you're going to want to uh, deauthenticate the clients. Uh, so in this step, you need to have uh, clients inside the network. Why? Because if you have no clients, then you can't listen to, to the four-way handshake. We're trying to capture the four-way handshake. So once we start uh, deauthenticating them, uh, the client is going to want to authenticate back to the network. So that's when we get the, uh, the WPA handshake. And we're gonna, once we get the handshake, we can uh, run air crack as well with a word list. So dictionary attack. Why is this useful? Because uh, there are a lot of dictionaries out there in the, in the web. And today, nowadays, we have the cloud. So we can run a whole lot of passwords to crack, uh, to crack the Wi-Fi password. So uh, here you can see the WPA handshake uh, sign right there. We can see that uh, there are two clients connected to the network. And once I started deauthenticating them, I'm going to get that message up there. And that's all you need. That's the, the gold mine. Uh, so if you do not get the handshake, you're going to want to deauthenticate uh, once again and repeat until you, until you do get the message. So now we're going to see how to crack WPA and WPA2. The way to crack WPA and WPA2 is actually the same method. So I'm not going to do uh, a difference between there. So we do the monitor mode interface. Uh, we're going to start looking for our target now. So once we get our target, we're going to specify it in AirDump with the channel and the BSSID. Yeah, getting the Mac, it's important. And uh, so we can see right here that we got a client connected. If we did not have that client, we just could not crack it. So in another terminal, I'm going to start deauthenticating the client. We can see that the power is going to, the, the power column is going to go jumping between zero and a neg negative number. That means that it's going to. That means that it's being interrupted. So the client is going to be kicked off of the network, and the client is going to try to get back into the network automatically. So that's when we get the WPA handshake. So what we did uh, in China a month ago, two months ago, is that uh, uh, we created a password uh, on Crunch. Just created a whole uh, dictionary with uh, passwords. Uh, number based. So for the people attending the the workshop, they could actually get to crack it. We created the we made it so that they could crack it in about five ten minutes. So you can uh, crack it with air crack and the uh, dictionary. So now I'm gonna start talking about uh, cloud. Uh, there's this site called GPU Hash Me. And uh, you can send the cap files on that site so that it can start cracking it on their side, on, on the cloud. So what it does is uh, basics, you have a basic search. Uh, G GPU HashMe is going to start uh, doing, um, well, the basic search only takes eight digits uh, based. And it's going to use a reduced word list uh, spectrum. So. Once you send the cap file, it's uh, no charge. And you get a message like, uh, hey, we found your password. Do you want to pay $5 for it? Uh, and usually I say no, because if it cracked it, then I can crack it with my own dictionaries. So that's what we uh, did uh, in the workshops or uh, when we were trying to hack some Wi Fi's. Uh, we actually sent it to GPU HashMe. And once it said uh, it got it, we just sent we just started uh, cracking on, on my computer. You also have an advanced uh, WPA search, which takes a, a lot uh, better and more word lists. Uh, you have to pay in advance about uh, $27. So if you do not get the password or the password is not crackable, you do not get a refund. Uh, once it founds, finds the password, you, it's, it's free. You already paid $27 for it. Uh, 
and there's a pro search. Yeah, it just uses a whole lot of uh, spectrum. It's going to be about uh, $54. So some of the cons about uh, cracking in the cloud. I think uh, the cons are basically when you try to hack Wi-Fi is that it's really slow. Like once uh, when I got into Wi-Fi hacking, I was so in, uh, uh, like I had, had high expectations because I thought I was going to start cracking Wi-Fi and I'm going to be like that cool kid that gets uh, the whole neighborhood's passwords. And it wasn't like that. Uh, it took a lot of time and practice to actually know what you're doing. So it, it, you can automize it. Uh, like I talked to you about crawlers and, and scrappers, I like automation. So I had some scripts in the presentation from DEF CON, there's some scripts for you guys to run that it takes uh, the whole spectrum of Wi-Fi's and it's going to start attacking all of them. So we got GPU hash me in the cloud uh, and we tried to do it ourselves. So we got an Amazon Web Service server and uh, we had 16 NVIDIA uh, K80 GPUs. Uh, it was about less than a dollar for GPU an hour. So if you can actually crack the password in under an hour, it's going to be less than a dollar. The, so the cons for uh, doing this um, dictionary-based attack is that you actually need dictionaries. The, that's kind of like a semi-con because there are a lot of dictionaries out there and really good dictionaries. Uh, another con, it was a... Uh, the configuration of the environment in Amazon Web Service was actually quite complicated. It was not like, just go do it. So we spent a lot of time doing that. So as well as, uh, so I, I told you it was a slow process. And in Amazon Web Service, uh, we did not get really good performance. Like we had 16 GPUs and it only cracked 60,000 passwords a second which sounds like a lot, but you're using uh, 16 GPUs. If you are trying to do like a dictionary with uh, 5 billion uh, passwords, it's going to take a lot of time. So actually, like I told you before, um, once we sent the GPU, the cap file to the GPU, and we got the checks, uh, we got the check like, hey, we found your password. Uh, we actually started using my Surface Book 2, and it was really, really, really fast. It got really hot, so th you can see why it's uh, ventilating. Uh, so I told you about the Amazon Web Service. It had about 60,000. It cracked 60,000 passwords uh, a second. The Surface Book 2 cracked at 100,000. So, and with one GPU, uh, I, I think we we're doing something wrong with in, in AWS, but we couldn't figure it out. And so now we're gonna start. I'm gonna start talking about uh, client attacks. So what I just talked to you uh, about, it was uh, infrastructure and encryption methods. Now we're going to start attacking the client. So the first attack is uh, called the cafe latte attack. I don't know why it's called like that, but it's a web attack. So you actually do not need the, the AP to be nearby. You only need the client. So what you do in this attack is that you are going to simulate that the AP is near the client. So the client is going to start connecting to you. Once the client starts connecting to you, you are going to get the same uh, passphrase from the client. So you can actually crack the WEP uh, passphrase that way. The cafe latte attack is actually really simple to uh, employ, to, to, uh, to do to somebody. If, they are using a WEP uh, AP, which please do not use them. Um, yeah, so it's really easy to execute. Yeah, it's very important for you guys to uh, have them in not associated mode. You can see uh, down there in the stations, uh, they're not associated, so they are good clients. If they are associated, uh, we're going to have to kick them off the network and start doing the attack. So for the cafe latte, uh, I told you, you are supposed to create your own uh, AP. You do that with Airbase. And with uh, command-n-w, that's going to start the cafe latte. You actually run that command, 
And once the client starts connecting to you, the cafe latte attack is going to execute by its own. You don't have to do anything at all. And you're going to have to uh, collect the packets as well as we did in the WEP cracking. And there's another uh, variation of the cafe latte, it's called the Hirte. It, what it does is uh, it fragmentates all the packets. So when you have a big packet sent through the network, what this does is going to uh, partitionate the, the, the big packet into really small packets so you can get more traffic. Why do we need more traffic? Because we need the IVs to overflow. So that's with the WEP client attacks. Um, so now uh, the evil twin. I think this is my uh, favorite attack, the evil uh, man in the middle. Uh, why is it my favorite attack? Because, well, if you're the man in the middle, you are getting all the traffic from your... Uh, from the person you want or the company. So I think that's really powerful. Once you crack the password, you can uh, decrypt the messages unless it's uh, HTTPS encrypted. But so how does it work? We, we see that uh, we got an ISP and the Dracaris, Dracaris is actually a real name for uh, AP. We saw the walking around the streets, we saw Dracaris down there. So we said, oh, we need to hack them. <laughs> so basically, the main in the middle is that all those uh, machines are connected to their cars, and our evil man down there is going to create an, uh, an identic AP and with the same name, same uh, ESSID, and same BSSID. And what he's going to do, he's going to kick them out of the network. He's going to denial of service the, the real AP. And all those clients that uh, are trying to reconnect to the, to the AP are going to connect to the, to the fake one. So it's actually quite easy to uh, execute as well. You just uh, put the fake AP, uh, kick, them, kick the clients off, and the clients are going to come, come to you. So there's this thing about competing with the legitimate route um, AP. You have to have s the same uh, signal or strength or power as the uh, original AP. If you have uh, less strength power, uh, the clients are not going to connect to you. So the steps for uh, doing the man in the middle is uh, you bring up the a fake AP. I'm sorry. You have an AP, you connect clients to it. If you're doing this uh, at home uh, and not in the wild, you bring up the AP, the original, you connect some clients to it, and then uh, bring up the fake AP. Then you de-auth them, and the clients are going to connect to the fake AP. And that's what I told you right now. So, yeah. Some commands. We already saw the how to create a fake AP with Airbase. This interface creates the AT0 interface, and you're going to have to do a little bit of configurations between uh, port forwarding, so you can actually give them uh, internet access. If you do not uh, do this configuration, then the client that connects to the fake AP, he's not going to be able to surface the, surface the, the net. So that's uh, how you create the bridge. You bridge your ETH0 with uh, the fake AP created AT0. You give them an IP, and uh, I think uh, I deleted some configurations. So if, if you want to know a specific configurations, check out the, the DEF CON China link. So once you, uh, you ping that IP, so you know that you're having internet uh, through the machine and more configurations. So, yeah, I'm repeating myself. So what we want to do is, uh, okay, so we got our fake AP, and uh, we got the client connected to us. Now we want to start sniffing the packets, and we're gonna do that uh, with Wireshark. We're gonna put uh, the Wireshark on the AT0, which is the fake AP uh, interface. And once you do that, you can uh, start uh, sniffing all the packets. In the terminal for the error base, it's going to say, uh, okay, the fake AP is up, 
and it's going to start sending messages for when people try to connect to, to your network, to your AP. Okay, so Airbase is actually uh, pretty cool because you can tell it to, uh, you can tell it which kind of network I want to uh, simulate. For example, if I want uh, an open network, I just do the Airbase, no uh, parameters. If I want a WEP uh, fake AP, I just put the dash W. And uh, with WPA, WPA, uh, with the different types of WPAs, we're going to start adding parameter parameters to uh, get the fake AP to behave, to behave like it's uh, what you're trying to do. So we already talked about denial of servers like throughout. When we were kicking off the clients of the network for it to connect to, to us, we were actually denial, denying their service. And the way uh, I only know how to do DOS, it's with, uh, it's doing AirPlay. So the AirPlay is actually a pretty cool command as well. You can tell it uh, to do like an infinite loop of the authing with the dash zero. You can do dash zero and uh, the next number, you see it's dash zero zero. If I go dash zero ten, it's going to send ten dauth packets. If I go dash zero zero, it's going to go forever. So once, if you have your machine turned on and dash zero zero, she's not going to be able to connect to the, to the network. All right, that was denial of service. I told you it was one slide. So um, DNS hijacking. We actually did not go in, in depth about this, but we got some uh, pretty cool DNS uh, results. Like, I'm not supposed to say, but we got all our, uh, my neighbors, and we started getting to the router, and we put, yeah, you can't see it very well. You go to the router uh, homepage, and to the configurations, you can go to the DNS, and you can write down uh, the IP you want it to of another DNS server. So, DNS hijacking is, is very useful for doing spear phishing. Like, if you are able to hack into the someone's Wi-Fi, get into the router, and ch change the DNS, uh, you can actually get everything from, from the people connecting there. Why? Because you're going to start looking like, ah, oh, he goes to the Bank of uh, Chile, he goes to the Banco of Santiago, he goes to uh, these pages, he goes there. So when you know where uh, your client is doing the, which pages he's visiting, you can actually create a, a phishing. Like, ah, oh, he goes to Banco de Chile, okay, I'm going to create a fake uh, Banco de Chile site, and Direct, redirect the original. Um, re you're gonna re redirect them to your uh, fake uh, website, so you can get credentials from whatever website you want. There's, uh, um, I think I didn't include the the script, but you can actually uh, automize it. You, uh, by trying to crack the default passwords. There are some dictionaries that have the default passwords for uh, the different brands of uh, APs. For example, for Linksys, there's uh, like username password defaults, and you can go through it uh, really quick. So if your uh, target is not really Wi-Fi geek and he didn't change the passwords, you're, you're practically in. And there's the link for how to DNS poison. Like, it's a Spanish link, so if you want to uh, translate it, that would be cool. Okay, so restaurants, coffee shops. The typical uh, display of a coffee shop or a restaurant is that you practically have Wi-Fi, and maybe you have some machines connected to it, and then you have some uh, printers. You are going to have some customers eating there that are going to ask for the Wi-Fi. So
So what this guy can do, uh, he can do a man in the middle in the whole restaurant. For example, if uh, he asks for the password, he is already in the network. He doesn't have to do much work to get anything from the people. You can actually get into the printers quite easily and start printing the crap out of them if you want to. Uh, so that's when I came to DEF CON. I was really worried about uh, being hacked here and being worried about the, the Wi-Fi's. And I see that problem a lot in uh, restaurants. Like, I am really looking out for anything suspicious. Like, if I'm in uh, Starbucks, for example, I look for suspicious people trying to do something. Like, my nature, I don't know. Um, okay. Okay, so that was uh, all about um, Wi-Fi. I just wanted to show you something uh, we got into on, on our way. Uh, it's a fake APs uh, flood. So what this command you're looking at right now is uh, what it does is it's going to create uh, a whole bunch of uh, fake APs with uh, really random um, names like those. Um, so if you guys can uh, watch on your cell phones right now, I'm going to start doing the attack or the flood. Um, why is it not working? All right. So if you uh, watch right now, you can see uh, that you're looking at uh, really weird named uh, Wi-Fi's. If you can see them, raise your hand. I yeah okay. So what happened in my machine right here? Like there's a lot of Wi-Fi going around, and my PC, my machine like uh, freezes. So there's uh, the same uh, proof of concept. Like if how can you do like a crash a device by sending so many uh, Wi-Fi's? We did not go uh, in depth, but I, I think it's uh, qu uh, interesting to, to look for. Like if you want to mess with somebody, uh, do a crazy AP flood and his uh, cell phone freezes. So uh, some of the devices uh, we used, uh, you can see here the pineapple, the Wi-Fi pineapple. Uh, you all know Hack5, right? So the pineapple, what it does is it automizes all the attacks I just talked about, and it does it fantastic, and it's really easy to, to use. Like if you want to uh, get a man in the middle, you just tell it to do it, and it does it. The, so this adapter, it says it has three kilometer range, which I uh, do not believe that. It's actually pretty good for the cost. It's 34 bucks in Amazon. And it's actually a pretty good adapter. The next one right here is $220 in Amazon. It says it has five uh, kilometers uh, range. I wouldn't trust that, but uh, my friend has it, and it's not that good. And that one. We got crazy. Uh, I think that one can go up about five kilometers uh, on open, like no buildings in the middle. So that's a crazy adapter right there. So to finalize this talk, uh, I just want to say uh, Wi-Fi is really weak. Like, they have these strong methods for encryption and ciphering, but there are a lot of ways to get around uh, if you want to attack a target. There are a lot of ways you can do it. Even though uh, Wi-Fi sets it's, uh, it's uh, safe, it is not. And people do not know that. So even WPA3 is vulnerable. So I don't know uh, how can we make it safer. I always ask myself that question. I just don't know how to solve it. And I, I think people smarter than me are trying to solve it, and they're not getting that either. 
So Wi-Fi is everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're gonna look, uh, you're gonna find Wi-Fi. And uh, I think that's a pretty cool uh, research subject, like Wi-Fi in general, because everywhere you go, you're gonna find it, and everybody, everyone uses it. So WEP, after uh, getting to know WEP, I was like, why would people use WEP? And uh, so we were in uh, my boss's office with the adapter, and we saw a WEP uh, pop up, and it went away. So we started looking for that WEP because we really wanted to uh, do the the hands-on, not just in the in the in the office. So we went outside uh, to look for it. We went to a, I think it was a gas station, and we were uh, one computer on one hand and the adapter in the other one, uh, walking like that in the streets, like where are you? Where are you? And uh, we actually got to we found the WEP as a gas station. So. Uh, we went there in uh, bad hours because they weren't working. It was like uh, 7 p.m. It was after hours, so no traffic was uh, available. So we went there the other, the next day, and we actually got to crack that WEP. It was pretty, I think that, that was my first uh, Wi-Fi uh, accomplishment. <clears throat> yeah, and to finalize it, Wi-Fi attacks are cheap to execute, and they're actually pretty easy. If you do not know anything about Wi-Fi, you can still do it. So there, hands on for Wi-Fi.